All right, so this last section of chapter two uh, talks about piecewise linear functions, right? So we already know how to graph linear functions, right? No problem. Now what we're gonna do is look at a function where it's defined literally in pieces depending on what the value of x is, but each of the separate pieces will happen to be a linear expression. So hence the name piecewise linear function. Uh, we already know about one, but we never looked at its graph until now. Um, let's look at the absolute value function. All right, so remember, if I gave you a real number x, the absolute value of x is itself, if x is already not negative, but if x happened to have been negative, the absolute value would have had to multiply it by negative one to return that positive value. Remember, because absolute value gives a distance, if you think about it, from the origin. And so what, we'll, what we can look at, though, is this is a piecewise defined function, right? That we can actually graph it in the xy plane. So for example, how do I get the graph? Well, if x is non-negative, so you take inputs to the right of the y-axis or on the y-axis, the graph of the absolute value of x is the same as y equals x, right? And so here, I'm going to graph y equals x, right? The point one, one, two, two, three, three, all the way up and down, up the line is on that graph. And so I get this piece. So don't, don't actually worry about this left piece for now. You just get this part of the graph. Now you don't continue on to the left with y equals x because this part only applies if x is non-negative. All right, so we don't consider what the graph of this looks like for negative values of x. Rather, if x is negative, the graph of this function looks like the graph of y equals negative x, which is this line, right? So notice here, I'm only using the part of the graph of y equals negative x for negative inputs, right? Because otherwise it's a graph would have occurred down here as well, but I'm not using positive x values here. I'm only using this graph here when the input happens to be negative. And so if you take those two together, this V-shaped graph is what you call the absolute value functions graph. All right, so we can do the same sort of thing with any number of pieces. That could be three, four pieces if you want, and they don't all have to be just x or negative x. You could have constants, you could have three x, you could have five minus three x, you could have any linear expression you want at this point, and the same sort of uh, attack would, uh, would apply. So let's take a look at, let's say, this example. Here we have a, a function that is defined in three pieces. And what we want to do is graph that function on the xy plane. Let's just talk about it verbally before we look at the graph. The first piece that we encounter is y equals x plus 4. Right? So we know what uh, y equals x plus 4 looks like. It's a line with a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 1. So if you're going to, why don't you try to do this along with me on just a scrap piece of paper, just so you can kind of see how you'd construct this go ahead and graph y equals x plus four in its entirety um, on the xy plane. Once you've done that, erase the part of that graph that corresponds to x values that are bigger than or equal to one, right? So that's gonna be a right-hand part of that graph, literally erase it from the xy plane. You're only gonna keep the part of that line that has an input less than one at x equals one itself, you're gonna put an open circle because we're not allowing that x value in the graph at this point, all right? Next, we have a constant, y equals two. And we know what the graph of y equals two looks like. It's a horizontal line because the slope is zero, right? Remember the slope is the change in y over the change in x. Well, there is no x term. So there is no change in y as the x changes, so it just stays horizontal. All right, so we're gonna graph, graph the line y equals two in its entirety on your xy plane. And then once you've done that, erase the graph that for x values that are to the left of one and to the right of four. So you're only gonna have this little itty bitty little segment and make a closed circle on that graph 
when x is equal to one and an open circle when x is equal to four, right? We use a closed circle because we're including the one here and we use an open circle because we're not including the four as an input here, all right? And then finally, we have a third piece, y equals x minus five, as long as the input is to the right or equal to four. So go ahead and graph y equals x minus five, again, in its entirety on the xy plane. Remember it has a y-intercept of minus five and a slope of one. Once you have that graph, erase that part of the graph that corresponds to x values less than four. Right, so you're only gonna keep that graph when x is to the right or equal to four. Okay, so erase for x less than four, and then put a closed circle at the graph when x is four. What you should get is a graph that ultimately looks like this. Ignore the dotted lines, those are just there for helping us graph. It's basically this purple graph is what you'll get in the end. And that's the approach you take to graph any piecewise linear function. In fact, later on, we're gonna look at piecewise functions like this, but we're gonna replace the pieces, replace the pieces with quadratics, with square roots, with any other function you want, but the same approach is actually gonna be used. You just graph this function here for those x values, and then you paste those together one piece at a time to get the ultimate graph. All right, so, uh, well, I already showed you this one. Go ahead and actually try this your turn. It's a little bit tamer than the other because two of them are constants, but see what you get, and then I'll put the solution up just so you can check yourself. <laughs> all right, so this is the graph that you should get. Um, notice that it's all the way, it's the constant two to the left of zero. So here's the constant two. I put an open circle at two because, or sorry, at zero two, because I'm not including x equal to zero as an input on that part of the graph. Between zero and three, we have the graph of y equals x, right? So there's that. You could have put a closed circle there, right? In fact, you would have initially then realized that it connects at the same point, but um, in any case, you could have, you probably would have at this point put a closed circle on your graph. That's perfectly fine. And then here we want the constant y equals three, which actually matches up to the point where you stop the other one, hence the lack of a closed point there, since it's continuous. And you get that sort of horizontal graph to the right. All right. Look at the next your turn. All right, so you have now a graph of a piecewise defined function f of x here. And what you wanna do is two things. You wanna evaluate the y values or the functional values at these particular x values. And then you wanna to try to find a piecewise definition for the function itself. So an f of x equals to however many pieces you need and what the intervals of the x values are. So go ahead and try that and then we'll talk through it. All right, so for the first part, f of negative four, does each of these units is equal to one, right? So negative four, two, three, four is here. The functional value at negative four is the y value of the point that corresponds to that, namely two. That's how I'm getting two here. Same way f of minus two, minus two is here. I don't use this guy. You're gonna to go to where the closed hole is, namely up here to get the functional value. That's two as well. F of three, the same sort of thing. Here's three. Now the question is, do I use the y value here or do I use the y value there? You only use the y value at the closed hole. And so the y value is minus three. And so that functional value is minus three. And then finally, F of five, here's five f of five is the y value up here, which occurs, or which is, and ends up being four. <laughs> All right. Now, to find the piecewise definition, you have three distinct chunks there for this graph. And so you're gonna have three distinct pieces in the definition, right? Notice that it's, the function's equal to two. So the y value goes here, that the, the, the uh, equation for this part of the graph, which is two. And the x values 
for which it holds is everything strictly to the right of minus, minus five and to the left or equal to minus two, right? Because I have a closed point here, but an open one there. And so the x values for which it holds is, are those in the interval from minus five to, to minus two inclusive. <laughs> Same way here, the next part of our graph is y equals minus three. That's where this constant's coming from. And the x values for which it holds goes from minus two not inclusive to three inclusive. That's where I'm getting this double inequality. And then the final piece here is up at four, and it's equal to four as long as the x value is between three not inclusive and six inclusive. Right? So that's how you can generate uh, a definition of a piecewise defined function from a graph. Um, ha if these happen to have been non-constant segments, so if they happen to have had a slope to them, you'd have to find the slope of that line segment and its intercept, or it's at least its equation using point slope form. Right? So they could be a little bit more involved, but you already know how to find the equation of a line given two points, and so you just would have to go through and that process to find the equation of that line to get each of these pieces in that case. Otherwise, it's the same. All right, and then finally, let's take a look at this application problem, right? So step functions are basically piecewise constant functions that go up by a fixed amount each time for a fixed length of interval. So they literally look like a staircase, right? And they come up a lot um, with hourly rates, right? So for example, um, let's look at your turn three. A plumber is known to charge $40 per hour or any portion of an hour, all right? So in other words, she'll charge you $40 up to the end of a first hour, and then the minute you're past the first hour, you the charge increases by $40 for the rest of that time, all right? And so, and this keeps happening every hour. And so what, we'll, what we know is that the functional value is gonna change at every hour mark. Right, so if the x-axis is labeled in hours, then at x equals one, x equals two, x equals three, you're gonna have a jump in the graph because the price is changing at those particular times. But between any two consecutive positive integers, the y value is always gonna be the same, right? Because the charge is a blanket cost, a fixed amount for any portion of an hour. All right, so let's take a look at um, what that would be. So for the first hour, we're not including zero because if she's not there at all, she can't charge you $40, right? So it's like she never even came to the door. But the minute she's at the door and she sets foot in, then for any amount of time from then up until the first hour is done, the charge for that amount of time is $40. The minute she's there for longer than an hour, the charge goes up to $80 and that's true all the way through the second hour. Once you're, she's there more than a second hour, the price goes up another $40. And so notice here, the structure is always the same. The jump occurs right at the hour mark and it occurs strictly to the right of that time. The jump is always by $40, right? And so the graph here, I don't have the graph shown here, but the graph basically would look like, it would be 40 with a, open circle at zero and a closed circle at one. And then the next piece would jump up to 80, open circle to close circle at two. Then it would jump up to 120 with an open circle at two and a closed at three, so on and so forth. All right, so you get a literally a step-by-step -step linear function. And then here, how much does she charge for working 3.5 hours? All you have to do is locate where that x value is in which of these intervals. And here it occurs smack dab in the middle of this interval. And so she would charge $160 for such a visit. All right, that's how you use that. So uh, for the homework problems, there are a couple of word problems that you have to work through, right? And then some non-word problems, but they're all basically not too, too bad. Some of these down toward the end get a little bit worse. Um, so, so plan to spend a little bit more time on some of these because they're trying to combine concepts that we learned in chapter one and, and uh, in this chapter. So go step by step through them and bring any questions to my attention at our next meeting.
All right. Take it easy, everyone. Bye. Oops. Maybe.